Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Get Good at Open Rollercoast Tycoon 2. Now, if you've seen the video for multiplayer round 15, you may have uh, seen this coaster that I built, which consists of an uh, inverted coaster and a sit down coaster on top of each other. So, in this episode, I will show you how to do that. Now, you may notice they are out of sync sometimes. Uh, it usually happens when there's uh, more guests in uh, the top or in the bottom uh, train. Because the gas actually add a bit of weight to the to the cars, and that makes the physics a little bit different. Also, this loop is uh, often a point where they desync because they have slightly different uh, speeds here. And also, the corkscrew uh, the corkscrew is the same as sometimes happens. But if you avoid those elements, you can usually get them to sync up uh, quite well. All right. Without further ado, let's uh, let's build one of these. All right, now the coasters that I like to use for this are the inverted coaster and the floorless coaster. So let's first uh, enable those in the ob object selection. Okay. Um, the reason I like to use those is that their uh, cars sort of uh, look the same. They have the same length, and I think they also have the same weight, which makes them uh, travel at uh, almost the same speed, which uh, helps in uh, keeping them in uh, in sync. Okay, uh, first we need to build a station. Um, let's do that. And for them to. Uh, to actually duel, or to, for them to actually uh, leave at the same uh, moment, they have to be synchronized. I typically just do that like this. Now I'll just build them uh, next to each other and synchronize with adjacent stations. Now, um, they need to share a track together, so in order to do that, we need to uh, lower the inverted coaster. So I'll just let it move down, and we want this track to be on top. Um, I will now uh, use the cheat to allow chain lifts on all track pieces, and I will also unlock operating limits. And now I will uh, enable a chain lift like this. And we'll make an S band at the beginning and we'll disable clearance checks like that. And now we'll uh, make a chain lift upwards. And for the invert, we'll do the same. Now, it may be tricky to see where you are building. Uh, one thing I like to do is uh, use the allow arbitrary write up changes cheat. And for the inverted coaster, we'll change it into a limb launched coaster because that's the track we will also use later. If I can find it. Uh, it was here hidden at the bottom. <laughs> and we'll also change the other one into a limb launched coaster. Alright. Now, this way it's easier to see where we are building with the inverted coaster. You can see it's right under the other track, but uh, that's fine. Now, the reason I built this track specifically like this with a uh, chain lift also on the S band is that this is a reliable way to synchronize them. We'll uh, see that later when we set the, the chain lift speeds. Right now we just go up here and we just build the, the bottom track exactly the same like the upper track. So let's make a curve drop here. Uh, 
Let's go a little bit uh, lower. Now I will just make a short track because this is just a demonstration. But when you want to try this out, you can make a longer track. Just make sure to build them uh, exactly the same. Okay, um, if you make a loop or a corkscrew, then uh, the inverted coaster in the end and the, the floorless coaster will actually have a little bit of a different uh, track length. So that's where they will usually uh, often desync. But uh, inline twists uh, work uh, work quite well. So here I will just make an inline twist. And since this is uh, just a demonstration, uh, let's just return to the station here. Actually, I think I'll just uh, split the tracks here. All right. And here we'll have some uh, breaks. And here we'll go up to the track. And we'll also add some breaks and lock breaks here. Okay, um, the top track will keep it as a limb last roller coaster and the bottom track. Uh, for now, let's make it a compact inverted coaster. Okay, I think that looks uh, alright. Uh, I think it's time. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> Before we start, um, we need to set the chain lift speed so first uh, we'll change both to a type where you can set the chain lift speed and we'll set it to 16 kilometers per hour i'll do the same for this ride and let's change it back to a limbless coaster and let's make sure um, by the way, the reason I'm using the limb launched coaster is just because it has a nice and flat track. So if you have a coaster both on top and bottom, uh, I think it's the most uh, realistic you can get. It. Of course, it's not completely realistic to have uh, two trains on the same track. But uh, yeah, it's just uh, the, the most flat track you can find. Other than that, it uh, has uh, all these elements you need, like inline twists. So that's just why I like to use the limb launch coaster track. Okay, um, let's uh, unlock all operating modes. And let's just put it in the continuous circuit block section mode. Did I change the chain lift speed yes I did all right let's uh, color this track white just uh, so it doesn't distract as much I pause the game and uh, okay I still need to build the entrance and exit something I often forget Okay, now I'll pause the game, I'll put them both in test mode, and I'll unpause. And I did something wrong here. <laughs> okay, this one was also a limb launch roller coaster before, so this one was still in powered launch uh, block section mode. Let's put in continuous circuit block section mode. Alright, now it should be okay. The reason I'm pausing the game before putting them in test mode is that then when I unpause, they will immediately be synchronized. And I see I made another mistake. <laughs> I didn't use the floorless trains. 
So let's do show vehicles from other track types. And now we can select the floorless trains, floorless twisted trains. And let's make sure the trains are both uh, equally long. So these are six cars and these are six cars. We'll want them to be the same length so they have uh, approximately the same weight. Okay. And you can see that because of this uh, chain lift speed of 16 km per hour and this S band at uh, the beginning with the chain lift, uh, that it gets the same speed uh, as the inverted coaster, which has a small drop at the beginning. Now, <laughs> you can see uh, that we immediately have an issue. That's because of the block breaks at the end. Because uh, they don't clear the block breaks at the same time, that's why they lose uh, synchronization at the beginning. So, something that may be best to do is uh, either add extra block sections or just uh, use one train or just put uh, continuous circuit mode. I will now just use uh, continuous circuit mode. Alright. <laughs> As you can see, it sometimes takes some uh, tweaking to get this right uh, working correctly. But that's, uh, that's not an issue. Okay, now you can see them go down here. They go through the twist at the same time. And here at the end, they will split again and uh, return back to the station. And then the next train goes. And as you can see, they uh, stay synchronized uh, nicely. Now, as I said, uh, if you put guests in the trains, um, if there's a lot more guests in one train than the other, then one train will be faster than the other, and then they will lose sync uh, quite easily. So that's something you should be uh, wary of. Now, um, you cannot just make uh, one of the tracks invisible. Uh, well, you could, but uh, the, the limb launched coaster track is the track we would we want to keep because uh, that one, uh, yeah, looks most uh, believable. And if we uh, normally, I would make a track invisible by changing it into a lift or elevator ride type. But if we do that with the inverted coaster. You can see it actually drops to uh, below where it should be. So that's not really an, uh, an option here. So uh, what I usually just do here is just uh, keep it as an uh, inverted roller coaster track or as a compact inverted coaster track. And we'll then we'll make it uh, invisible the tedious way, which is by changing all the track pieces to um, to the well, by putting corrupt elements on all of the track pieces for the inverted roller coaster, and as you can imagine, that is uh, quite some work. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna do that for uh, all the track pieces, just for some of them. And of course, uh, here at the beginning, you'll want to keep a piece of track here. What I often do here at the uh, at the beginning is that I'll remove the track here. I will remove the inverted track here. And then what I do is uh, I build another limb launch coaster and I will just Go like this. There. So now it actually looks like it's also going on some uh, limb launched coasted track here downwards. It's just a little, uh, <laughs> little trick. Uh, of course, uh, one thing that's now still an issue is that. Uh, the bottom coaster is now 
yeah, traveling through all these uh, supports that are left. And that's probably something uh, you don't want. It, uh, it looks quite silly, I think. So what I usually uh, do here is that I make my own supports. Uh, if you have custom scenery items, then you probably have some more options to make uh, supports. If you don't have custom scenery items available, I typically just use these uh, wooden post fences from the Wild West team. And then I just uh, yeah, raise them until they are level with the track. Or a little bit below, or uh, yeah, you'll have to see uh, what what looks best for you. You cannot always get this to uh, to look right, but it uh, it does usually work on the on the straight pieces of track. And then usually with uh, with poles or with posts. I then make my own uh, custom supports. But yeah, you'll uh, have to see what uh, what works for you. You could also use this. Uh... Oh wait, no, never mind. <laughs> you could use these uh, these poles. And then you could use the, this diagonal. Poles as well, but yeah, like I said, uh, for custom supports, you should do what uh, what you think looks uh, looks best for you. But yeah, this is how you do it. It's uh, it's quite easy to do, and I think uh, the result uh, usually looks uh, looks quite nice. All right, let's go back to the round 15 coaster. Actually, instead of the round 15 coaster, I went to uh, one of these that I'm still working on in a different park of mine. It's uh, still unfinished, but the track is uh, is done. So yeah, here uh, I went for a much bigger layout. Uh, I went a bit crazy with all the custom supports under it. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, how you do the supports is really up to you. Here I used a lot of the Wild West. Uh, uh, wooden post fences and posts under it some of those uh, what are they called the steel uh, lattice work elements some more wooden post uh, fences in between probably gonna make some buildings here in the middle I'm not sure yet actually what I'm gonna do here I also put some uh, of these uh, mini suspended coasted uh, track pieces here in between in the corners just to uh, connect everything. Also here on these uh, curved pieces I put these wooden post fences and using the tile inspector I actually uh, angled them. This is what they normally look like in here. I angled them. Just so it looks like the supports are attached uh, on the side. And because I avoided uh, using any loops here Corkscrews, they actually stay uh, synced uh, quite well. I even put some uh, block breaks here. And because I have uh, more block sections, uh, the trains will now leave uh, normally. Without having to wait for the trains to uh, get into the last block sections. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed these uh, examples. Uh, and uh, I encourage you to try and make uh, one of these coasters. I think they will look uh, great in the, in any park. Of course, they are not the most realistic uh, coaster type you can make, but uh, it's, uh, I think it's a really cool trick uh, to do in this game. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again in the next one. See you later.